So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the team from the Australian Academy of Science. We have Claudette, Kristen and Angela. Thanks to you three and it's great to have you with us. Uh, take it away, Claudette. Thank you. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us everyone. Thank you Nathan for the introduction and a special thank you to Nathan and his colleague Kevin at Digital Learning and Teaching Victoria for this opportunity to uh, to join you this afternoon. We've been talking to DLTV for the past few months and really been impressed with their um, prompt and very voluminous response to the COVID um, situation, particularly in the, the um, face of professional learning. This is the 24th um, webinar that DLTV has presented since April and so that's a really significant undertaking and I'm pleased to be part of um, that, that suite of offerings. We really appreciate you coming along here today to hear about the education programs that we offer at the Academy of Science. We hope that you take away a new idea, something to share with a colleague, something to try out in your classroom and that this afternoon gives you a new, new insight and some new things that you can do with your classroom. As Nathan said, I'm here today with my colleagues, Kristen and Angela, and we are three of the 10 members of the education team at the Australian Academy of Science. Kristen and I are based in Canberra and Angela's in Melbourne. We feel we each worked as classroom teachers and this informs our daily approach. The academies of the, the, sorry, the programs of the Australian Academy of Science are designed to support teachers, to empower teachers, to help you do your job better so that we know that we're doing ours well. Thanks, Angela. This afternoon, we are here to provide you with a snapshot of the three education programs that we have, Primary Connections, Linking Science with Literacy, Resolve, Maths by Inquiry, and Science by Doing. We will share with you some of the key features, a bit of a taster, and significantly we want to share with you how we have responded to helping teachers and systems and schools during the COVID crisis, making some adaptations to make sure that our things can be useful no matter what setting you're in. One of the things that's really important about professional learning and events like this is having a chat over a cup of tea. We can't quite do that today, but there is a chat function. So at the moment, I can see lots of you uh, saying hello to each other. I'd love you to say hello to the group. Just tell us something, you know, your name, where you are, what you're teaching, and if what particularly you're here about today. I'll give you a moment while you discover the chat box um, and invite you just to share that with us uh, so that we can meet you. Thanks. We've got Emma from the Broken Hill School of the Air. Thank you. Hi, Emma. Um, I won't read out everybody's, but I'll just, just let you. you um, so, I mean, I think one of the good things about, um, well, one of the things about COVID that hasn't been up um, before is necessarily that we might not have had people from Broken Hill, New South Wales, um, Ballarat and Canberra in the same um, room uh, at the same time um, on a Thursday afternoon. So thank you. Thanks everybody. This is really lovely. Um, just while you're uh, just putting your final details in, just to let you know how the, the afternoon will run, each of the programs will share about five minutes, again, of their key features and what they've been doing during COVID. We'll actually um, pause at that point if there's any emergency or urgent questions that have appeared to you. If you don't, don't worry, we'll have a, a larger question time at the end. The other thing that we're going to talk to you about today is these programs are always in evolution and they're evolving. And right now we're looking at how these programs in maths and science can actually connect and support uh, delivery of the digital technologies and the design technologies. So as you're listening and if you're coming from those areas, keep an ear out because we're really keen to see the connections and the interactions that you notice. I Thank you still for all of those. I'm gonna just, while you're just populating those, I will um, just tell, introduce the Australian Academy of Science to you before I pass on for the, the main part. So the Australian Academy of Science, I don't know if you've heard of us, um, have a fabulous logo. It's in the top uh, right corner, sorry, left corner of uh, the slide there with the uh, with the COVID um, image as well. Uh, that represents the Shine Dome and that's the, the heart of the Academy. So anyone that might have been to Melbourne, we actually have a dome. Um, the dome is 60 years old and it's um, something that we feature there. So, but what even is an Academy? The Australian Academy of Science began in 1954 and it's modelled on the Royal Society in London, which is hundreds of years old. And that was where steamed minds wanted to get together 
together and have a bit of a chat. Um, went on to become a world leader in shaping scientific thought. And in 1954, based on that, there was an Academy uh, of Science uh, in Australia set up. The Academy of Science is an independent, not-for-profit organisation. We're funded by a range of grants um, from government and other agencies. We're going to tell you about our programs today. Equally, on our website, you might be interested to check out the COVID-19 hub. It's got lots of research um, there in particular. We do a lot of rapid research response um, coordination. We have a lot of work around women in STEM. You can find the Women in STEM database if you're looking for people to talk to your um, to your students or go on boards or the like, or you might be a women, woman in STEM who'd like to make yourselves available to others. And we've also got a really rich video program. You'll see a little bit of that today um, in Angela's presentation, but yeah, please investigate science.org.au. I'm sure you'll find something there. Well, I hope you'll find something there that's interesting for you. Thank you everyone for your um, really great uh, self-introductions. I'm really, it's really nice to know who's out there. We've been planning this and practicing this for a while. And I really hope that all of you uh, get a little bit of a window into what we do and it um, yeah, illuminates something that you might do too. Angela, Primary Connections. Thank you, Claudette. Um, my name's Angela. I'm coming to you from Melbourne. It is marvellous Melbourne. I think I'm allowed to say that under these circumstances. It's not a state-based bias. Um, but I'm delighted to be here and I really thank you for tuning in. And it's my privilege to talk with you about Primary Connections. So Primary Connections is a foundation to Year 6 Science Literacy Program. As Claudette mentioned, it's funded by the Australian Government since 2003. It's extensively and regularly evaluated. It includes teaching resources that are trial by teachers and professional learning support in the face of, in, in, as face-to-face -face workshops and um, online professional learning. Guided inquiry is really central to the Primary Connections program and research shows that this teaching and learning approach really increases student engagement and supports teacher confidence. So you might be familiar with the suite of 40 Primary Connections units that are available in hard copy and online via Scootal. So the key features of the units are that they are, are framed around the 5E inquiry model. All of the units are aligned to the Australian Curriculum Science. They include teacher background information, resource sheets, um, detailed descriptions of pedagogies in appendices, unit and lesson summaries. Importantly, they include links to the Australian Curriculum Mathematics and Technologies curriculum, the general capabilities and cross-curricular priorities as well. So when you open a unit, you'll see a detailed lesson plan and tabs that indicate the phase of the 5E model that's, um, that's being emphasised in that lesson. There's lots of information for teachers with respect to the assessment focus and the focus of the lesson. Embedded in the units are the student resource sheets, which are available as PDF, but are also avail available electronically and, and in an editable format um, from our website. Now, these are a great way to um, provide flexibility for teaching and for a more tailored approach for student learning. So check them out on the website. There's a whole lot of other stuff that you'll find on our website, and I really encourage you to explore that. So for example, there are more assessment resources, including rubrics and work samples for all of the units. Embedded in the, in, in the website are direct links to our units um, as PDFs, equipment list, lists, teaching and learning templates, planning resources, um, curriculum alignment documents, and a whole host of um, professional learning videos, as well as a professional learning tab that has um, some really interesting stuff and material for you to share with others in your um, communities of practice. So please do check out our website or subscribe to our mailing list because we add new resources regularly. For example, we've just worked on some stuff for National Science Week and the offerings include um, some, some resources that use the Australian Academy of Science video collection um, that's particularly relevant to, to the theme of Deep Blue. So they're available for download and for use 
with your students um, just from our website. So please check those out. And as I said, we put new stuff up all the time. So that's a really um, that's a really quick wrap up of our program, but we've also done some very intentional and strategic things in related to responding to COVID. A lot of that has been framed around producing new digital resources, so new online resources essentially. So amongst those are our Science for Families resources. Science for Families is a whole suite of resources across the science strands that are learning activities with the accompanying resources that use everyday materials can be done in the home and these can be shared with your students or the broader school community via newsletters, your own website, etc. In addition, and particularly for teachers, we've included some teaching sequences across the strands. It's one for each at the moment, and they include PowerPoints that can be directly uploaded to other platforms such as Seesaw or shared via um, whatever you're using with your students. And students can work in those PowerPoint slides to provide information and support them to learn a whole range of topics that are across the four strands. So there are four examples of those for you to check out and they can be used across ages um, and year levels. It's just a matter of how you interpret and, and use those creatively. Importantly, we also have some online professional learning and as uh, Claudette mentioned, we've made a particular um, effort to create a new course around embedding design technology using primary connections. So this course is free to access and is quite short, only two hours um, of engagement. And at the end of it, you get to create a design brief that you can implement with your students and indeed share online in a remote space. And the last thing that I'd like to mention are some digital, um, curated digital and interactive resources that complement primary connections using Scootle. Um, they're called our playlists, so look out for them on Scootle. So thank you for listening. Um, we would welcome your impressions and, and definitely your questions. So I'll just pause for a moment and give you an opportunity to do that. Um, knowing that if you have some questions that come up later, feel free to post them as you go along. So I might, I might um, pause there. Um, thank you for that feedback Emma and um, we appreciate all of your feedback and we do welcome your questions but I might I might pass over to Kristen now um, and keep sending those questions if you have them and we will definitely attend to them as we go along so thanks for listening everyone thanks Kristen thank you Angela and um, I'm coming to you from Canberra today I'm going to be sharing with you about Resolve um, I'm the program manager for Resolve um, Result Maths by Inquiry is the Academy's newest of the education programs. It's our mathematics project which commenced in 2016. It provides teaching resources and professional learning materials for teachers of mathematics from foundation through to year 10. And all Resolve resources are aligned to the Australian Curriculum Mathematics and emphasise an interconnected approach to developing content knowledge as well as the mathematical proficiencies, problem solving, reasoning, understanding and fluency. All of our resources are freely available on our website. Thanks, Angela. Um, our Resolve tagline, next slide, Angela, sorry. Our Resolve tagline is that we are promoting a spirit of inquiry in school mathematics. Well, what does this mean? At Resolve, we promote the use of what we call high level mathematical tasks. These tasks are about doing real mathematics. It's learning through problem solving. Students engage in problems, they apply their current mathematical understandings, and they build new mathematical understandings through these problems. These tasks are about teaching students new skills and procedures connected to key mathematical ideas and also connected to the problems they're working on. We use this approach as research tells us that the greatest learning comes through tasks where students are encouraged to become the author of their own ideas 
and when they're held accountable for reasoning about and understanding these key ideas. And it's these sorts of tasks that provide the right opportunities for students to engage in this sort of mathematical thinking and reasoning. The openness of these high level tasks mean that they are for all students, not just some. The depth of learning from these tasks mean that they're for all of the time and not just sometimes in the mathematics classroom. And it's also important to acknowledge that these tasks are where the teachers play a really central role. They guide students through inquiry and they use student thinking as a catalyst for learning. So to illustrate, I'm actually gonna today walk you through one of our tasks and really show how students are actively engaged in problem solving and reasoning, as well as learning skills along the way. Thanks, Angela. Area and perimeter is a key mathematical um, or measurement concept introduced in the primary years and in the curriculum, students in year five are asked to calculate the perimeter and area of rectangles. We've used the context, the bumper car tracks to calculate the area and perimeter of rectangles, but it also provides us the opportunity to take a deeper exploration into some really interesting mathematics that has some great real world connections. Thanks, Angela. So students are introduced to the problem. The rail around the outside of a bump car ride is 50 metres. It's rectangular in shape with a side length that is a whole number. What's the area of the floor? Now, if we'd have had time now, I'd actually get you to start exploring this problem and doing it um, for yourself. Perhaps you can quickly think of a rectangle with a perimeter of 50 metres. What's its area? Can you think of another one? What is its area? Is there only one answer? No, there's actually a whole lot of answers. And so calculating the area and perimeter of multiple rectangles provides the students with practice. It also allows the teacher to determine who understands the concepts and who is able to calculate um, accurately. And the teacher may use this opportunity to do some targeted teaching with students if needed. The teacher can also ask the students questions such as how many different rectangles are possible and how will you know if you found them all? This leads students to see that sorting and organising mathematical data shows whether all possibilities have been found and allows the students to look for patterns and to make hypotheses which can then be tested. Next slide. In this instance, the different rectangles have been arranged into a table. What patterns can you see? What hypotheses can you make? Uh, you might note that the side, uh, sorry, the length and width of each rectangle add to 25. And we can link this to um, the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle, which is two times the length plus the width. We can also see that the smallest area is 24 metres squared, the largest is 156 metres squared, which would make the better bumper car track and why. We can see a lot of symmetry in the table as well. And there's an, a pattern that forms as the area increases and then decreases. It increases by 22, 20, 18, 16, and so on. And then when it reaches 156, it starts to decrease. Slide. This data can be represented as a graph which really highlights the symmetry and the smallest and greatest areas. The original problem only allowed for sides that measured in whole meters. What if we move, remove that dis, uh, restriction? What's the highest point on the graph? Well, it'd be a rectangle that measured 12.5 by 12.5 metres. That has an area of 156.25 metres squared. What can we say about this rectangle? Well, we can say it's a rectangle with the greatest area, but, we, but that rectangle is actually a square. This poses the question, is a square a rectangle? another point to assess students' knowledge and understanding. And for many students, a square does not fit 
their definition of a rectangle. They believe that a rectangle has two long sides and two short sides, and this is mathematically incorrect. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. A square is a rectangle. In fact, it's a special case of a rectangle. It's a regular rectangle, as all sides and angles are equal in length. Slide. So from here, students can start to form some generalisations. Generalisations are at the heart of mathematics. In fact, if students are not generalising, they are not doing mathematics. And that's as true for our foundation students as much as our year 10 students. So what generalisations can we make? We can say that the closer in length the sides are, the greater the area, and that the rectangle with the greatest area with a set perimeter will be a square. Next slide. So this fictitious context of bumper cars allows us to explore some powerful mathematics. Regular shapes will always have the greatest area given a set perimeter and exploring this further, students see that the greater the number of sides these regular shapes have, the greater the area. The more sides, the more circular the shape and so the shape with the greatest area is going to be a circle. Um, we see this efficient use of space all around us in nature and one of my favourite examples is bees. Bees have to be our greatest yet smallest of all mathematicians. Bees build honeycomb using hexagons. Hexagons are the shape with the greatest area that will still tessellate and hexagons allow them to use the least amount of wax to build comb that will hold the greatest amount of honey. Next slide, thanks Angela. Um, this task gives you a taste of the teaching resources that are on our website. Uh, as mentioned, um, just next bit, Angela, our resources are foundation to year 10. They're linked to the Australian curriculum and cover all strands of the mathematics curriculum. It's not a comprehensive resource as yet. It is slowly growing. Um, we are still quite a young project. Our professional learning resources are designed to help teachers implement this approach to mathematical inquiry. And many of our professional learning resources are now online self-paced modules that you can access freely. A final aspect of our resources are our champions. Uh, this is a cohort of teachers who are championing the Resolve approach to inquiry and also promoting the resources in their schools and more broadly in the education community. Our champions are from all over Australia, from primary and secondary schools and representative of all sectors. Next slide. The Resolve COVID response has been to support peak bodies to convert our resources to be suitable for at-home learning. We've done this with the Department of Education of New in New South Wales, and we're currently working with the Maths Association of Victoria. I'd encourage you to have a look at the um, MAV, Maths Association of Victoria website, and the resources they have available. You may also consider becoming a member of MAV. They're one of the strongest and most active maths association in, associations in Australia with fantastic resources. So next slide, Angela. Our website is resolve.edu.au. Please jump on, have a look and explore it. Uh, there's also the opportunity to contact us via our website. Um, I'm going to hand back over to all of you now. And if you have any questions, please post them into the chat. Alternatively, you might like to um, share some of your quick impressions on Resolve. Uh, and I noticed before that uh, people had mentioned they'd used resources, maybe some of your favourite resources, you'd like to share them then. Kristen. I'll pause for those questions. Yes, Claudette. Kristen, I've just been sourcing the questions as people have been, there's been a couple and I just wanted, I've, I've done an attempt to respond, but I thought I'd, I'd bring them back to your attention. So um, one of the questions was, could these tasks work with remote learning? This was earlier in your presentation and you've just mentioned that you've done some work there with um, the Department of Education New South Wales and you're working with MAV. Could yep. you tell us um, about that and um, yeah, what's there ready for us now? Sure. And I think it's a great question. It is a lot. Um, these sorts of 
tasks are very good when the teacher is with the students because you're carefully guiding students through it. The way that we have adapted these tasks for remote learning is um, we're using a lot of PowerPoint more as video um, with video footage in it as well and voiceover to support students. Um, I We will post over the coming days a link to the resources that are online for the Department of Education in New South Wales. They are freely available. And um, so anybody can access those. And I, we can also, as I said, check the MAV website. They're continuing to uh, build more resources and with links to some of our resources within um, those as well. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, I wanted to just also share a question that had come up earlier, which was a query about, was this resolved particularly for um, extension or extended learning areas? I did share that resolve is intended for all children and that you've actually had quite a lot of success around Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and children who speak English as a second language. Could you speak to the, the, the broader intent about resolve and who it's for? Sure. Um, one of uh, the underpinnings of Resolve is that all of our tasks are challenging for all students, but they're also inclusive of all students. There is a misconception that problem solving is only for some students in classrooms, and certainly that is not the case. So um, within our resources, we provide where needed prompts if a student is struggling to access the content that's there. We provide prompts that help students enter a task. Um, we also provide prompts to extend students. Most of our tasks have a very, quite a low floor, but a very high ceiling. And so definitely for all students in the classroom. Thanks, Kristen. I will share. Um, Roma has asked a question around all of so all of the teaching resources, not specifically the ones for remote learning. And Roma wondered about um, the the do they scope and sequence? Uh, um, at this stage, no. One of the things that we have just started to do is look at learning progressions, and we're we're um, working with academics to develop these progressions, which actually looks at how content develops not just across the course of the year, but across the course of time um, in a student's schooling. So there are some resources which can be found under our work and topics, um, and we're continuing to de develop those. We are also, um, at this stage, there are certainly, we don't have scope and sequences on our website, but um, as I said, we've got that contact us, and that's something that we could certainly talk to you further about if that's a way that we can help you. Fantastic. Kristen, I'm just going to quickly check. Um, so I would like to say thank you to Carl, who has shared the link to the MAV um, remote wow. learning support in the web chat. And there was another question. Um, there was one probably to Nathan. Um, did the YouTube link to access the recording. Um, I understand, Nathan, that will be made available within 10 days of today's. Um, yes, no worries. I'll, I'll actually put that in the chat now. Sorry, I forgot okay. to do it after my spiel. I'll That's put it in there. No I think that responds. I'm just making sure I haven't. Um, I think we've captured, so we've heard from those people. If, if I have forgotten, send me a nudge. Um, Emma's under control. The, uh, it's, <laughs> that's very school. It was under control. Thank you, Emma Mullins. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, so people have been sharing. And um, Kristen, I don't know if you can see, but there's a comment about uh, the bumper car activities, um, just noting from Suzanne Ellis that it worked really well with um, children that were struggling, and it was great to have that aha moment. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing thanks. that. Experience. Yeah, thank you, um, Suzanne. Suzanne and I, I've done a very similar sort of way of work, um, task with students before many times, and it is they get it's it's really powerful and really engages students and gets them thinking deeply about the mathematics. I think it's back to. Uh, thank you, everyone. We're good now. So we're now going to uh, head off <laughs> back into science uh, with our secondary science program, Science by Doing. Angela, please share. Thank you, Claudette and um, Resolve for that. And thank you everyone for posting such great questions. It's fantastic to hear from you and what you need. So I'll be talking about science by doing. And for those of you who know the program, 
Um, you'll be familiar with the fact that it's a year seven to 10 online secondary science program, also funded by Australian government since 2007. So it includes 16 curriculum units that are fully aligned to the Australian curriculum. So there are four units for each year level that represent the different strands of science. There are also two additional units called an introduction to science by doing and doing science investigating investigations. So when you navigate to the Science by Doing website, you'll be asked to sign in as a teacher or a student. So this grab here displays what you will see as, as a teacher login. So to the right hand side, there are two yellow tabs which say professional learning and teacher information. So when you visit those tabs, what you'll find is a range of professional learning support resources across a broad range of topics that include videos, interactive tools and guides. They all live there. They're suitable to use in communities of practice with, within your school and they offer really great stimulus material for collegiate discussions amongst teams or at a science faculty meeting. So the curriculum unit section is where all of the stuff that is needed by students and teachers lives. And I'll show you what that looks like for the teacher. So when you have a look at um, a particular unit, in this case, I've pulled up the Year 9 Chemical Reactions Unit. It'll look like this for the teacher. So you get all of this information that's links to the Australian curriculum, assessment, etc., and the students we'll see where you can identify part one is elementary, a whole host of activities for them to engage with. So if I was a student and I was to hit one of the activities, I would be afforded a whole lot of stuff. So things like a student guide, which has instructions and questions, student digital materials, which include video, audio and interactive games and tools, and a whole host of activity sheets and e-notebook. And as a teacher, I would also be given an optional sample test that I can use. So how did Science by Doing respond to COVID-19? Well, the actual fact is that in its current form, it's really suitable for use in a range of teaching and learning session settings, and particularly in a remote setting. So what we did is we shouted out to teachers who have been using it um, in, in that context, particularly our distance educators, and we invited them to give us some tips and, um, and tricks essentially on how to best use it with secondary students in a remote way. And as a result of that, we have curated a whole list of ideas and strategies for best practice and best outcomes for remote learning using science by doing and that's called a guide to designing online learning so you'll see a grab there from our website so if you visit that you'll get a whole list of really um, useful strategies and ideas around how different uh, teachers have used the resources with their students for online learning in addition to that We've curated a list of learning programs, which are digital resources that you might not be familiar with, that can be used directly with your students in a remote capacity. And that's all available in one place in this online learning programs for high school students. To find that one, you'll have to go to the teacher information tab. Um, that's where that's located because sometimes that's a bit tricky to find. So when you hit the website, there's a really easy to, um, to view video that guides you through how to access the resources and so it's, it's really there's a really good explainer and it's, it's quite um, easy to navigate for you and for students as well okay so we can be contacted at science by doing and you can find us at the website on our, on our website and i really welcome any questions that you may have or any impressions and if anyone's used it i'd love to hear from you because we're always looking out for different and innovative ways that people are using our academy education program resources thank you angela
I'm just looking at some of the questions now. Um, I just wanted to respond. Uh, there's a uh, Lynn McAllister was sharing an experience that uh, it's not as easy to sign students up as you think. Um, Lynn, we'd really love to know um, a bit more about that experience because we are we are trying to make it um, yeah as streamlined as possible. And and um, so please feel free. I've written um, science by doing it science.org.au there. Um, if there's anything we could do, um, love to work with you. Um, uh, let me have let me have a quick look. Um, Helen uh, asked about can students use this independently of the teachers having to set it for them. Angela, thoughts on that? Yeah. One? Yes, uh, yes. So the answer is yes. In fact, it's um, it is the, it's, it is that sort of thing that students just pro can just progress through the tasks, um, and it is it is it's very well suited for that in fact um, I think that if you were aiming to use it in class as a teacher you would add extra things to it but definitely as a remote learning opportunity it's quite straightforward um, and has all the content that's needed to guide students and progress them through the units definitely yes that's it. Uh, there was a question here, and it's a re it's a really interesting question um, from Emma Mullins. Um, is there any likelihood of having primary resources on the website, or would primary connections be the go to in that respect? And so I think um, I, I I smile because um, we're about to talk about sort of the future, particularly around digital technologies and how the programs can support that learning area. However. Our dream and what we've been actually working on in the last couple of years is a digital transformation of primary connections. And actually, we um, have gone through a deep dive into what works in the program. So you've seen today it in PDF and um, you know, kind of screen grab form, and actually how to make that a very interactive um, real life experience. So we've actually gone, uh, we've done some design research with a design consultancy. Wendy Jobling, who's on this um, particular call from Deakin University, has been working with us. And what we've been doing is analyzing and contrasting people's experience um, in its current form as well as now we're moving some digital things and what's the, the points of difference and how do we make maximize and leverage the impact so I fingers crossed and toes uh, where we're waiting uh, where like many uh, we're funded by an Australian government grant and we're uh, in between grants at the moment and but that that's what we have pitched um, for yeah. Either from somewhere. So if you guys know anyone and you'd love to see it, let's get let's let's tell people that that's what we need um, because yeah, that would really be fantastic. So I'm glad to hear that there's some interest in that, um, and um, yeah, happy to you know keep you. I I sorry, I'm reading <laughs> reading the chat along. Emma Mullins. I wish I feel like I know some of the right people. Emma said, "Brilliant, fingers crossed." Um, yeah. All fingers and codes, um, and we'll see what's around the corner. But there's a lot of faith in these programs from an academy perspective. They're really well known. Research has shown that, um, and so we're building with a good thing. But we do need. We're not complacent. We don't say, "Oh, that's primary connections, science by doing resolve." We're all about making this better. And what I'll do is, Angela, talk about that in our next slide. Um, well, actually, I was just going to share. Um, <laughs> I would just like to share one something with the secondary teachers out there um, and it, it really does segue from Claudette's point about the programs being a, you know one consolidated um, approach from uh, academy education so at the back of all of the primary connections units and in particular if you're looking at year five and six there are some self-assessment checklists and they are mapped to um, you know, the science inquiry skills, science as a human endeavor, and the science understandings. These are really great tools that you can pick up from primary connections resources, which are freely accessible, and you could use as um, a, a diagnostic for your year seven students. It's fantastic, like tool that you can take from a, a primary connections curriculum unit and bring it straight into a year seven um, you know, learning area to kick off a new unit in a particular strand. And that's just one way in which primary connections and science by doing can mesh. But definitely pedagogically, there's a lot of stuff in our primary connections approach that has application for our year seven to 10 students. And we are going to be looking at that and working towards developing an online course that really does highlight some opportunities for, for to showcase that across the programs, the science programs definitely coming up. So watch out for that. So I don't know if that was of any use, but hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. 
the last slide now and hand over to Claudette. So, yeah, so what's next? Um, as I said, this has been really interesting. Um, for those of you that might know Primary Connections particularly well, it was intended to be four curriculum units as exemplars of um, inquiry teaching, and it has grown to be 41. Um, it's got a really rich um, professional learning. And now where it was, but it was designed pre um, pre-digital really it started in 2005 and so also what was designed pre-digital or pre-digital technologies as a component of the Australian curriculum for technologies were these programs now the reality is there's a lot that you guys have to do and we want to help so what we want to do over the next six months is like we do with everything is we talk to teachers we talk to professional associations and we don't we like we think it's an interesting idea we think there's a need for it but we're going to test that um, to make sure that what we build is useful so what we wanted to do here was really open it up to you if you've thought about some connections um, or some things that you really would go oh if that was part of your resources um, please you know put this in when we were doing our rehearsal uh, an hour ago, Nathan from DLTV heard Kristen talking about generalizations in mathematics and saw some really strong connections with the um, computational thinking and algorithmic thinking. So they're the kind of things where we're like, great, let's let's show the synergies, let's show the connections. You might have some thoughts now. You might want to think about it and get in touch with us. And you can do that at education at science.org.au or through any of the questions, uh, the emails that you've heard today. This is um, the end of our snapshot journey. So we've, we've shown you about um, our programs. We hope that you've um, been able to got something. We really ask you to yeah, share it with other people, share the link when it comes out. Um, if you know people in other organizations, um, we know that Mav's got some stuff, so keep an eye on that. I'll just ask Kristen and Angela if they have anything else. But meanwhile, if you've got, this is, uh, I guess, your last opportunity uh, to have uh, some questions um, at this particular event. I just wanted to add, Claudette, that um, if you do, please do reach out to us. Please, please get in contact. I've just noticed I'm off camera. Um, please do reach out to us. Please get in contact with us. And if you do have a question, email our inboxes because there are humans at the other end and we will definitely answer, answer your questions. We are small teams, but we're really passionate about supporting teachers, um, particularly at this time. We acknowledge what, what everyone is doing and we are so incredibly grateful for that. So definitely shout out to us because we will get back to you um, 100%. So that was my, my last comment. So thanks everyone for listening. And same from me, um, as Claudette and Angela have said, please get in touch. We're thinking about Resolve into the future and, and what will best support you. So please, please let us know um, any of your thoughts. And um, as I said, we've got contact us on our website and you can do it from there. Fantastic. Well, look, in a surprise to us all, no doubt, um, as you can probably tell from <laughs> this particular conversation, we are very uh, passionate, enthused and love a chat. The fact that it's 4.44, I'm thrilled by. I think Nathan and Kevin um, should be impressed. I hope you all are. It's been very lovely to talk with you. Um, I might pass over to Nathan to finish us off. Yeah, well, that, just terrific, and I, I agree with so many of the comments that have been put into the chat here. A really um, wonderfully put together presentation that gives us a glimpse of some of the things that you've got in those programs. And yeah, I, I'm, I hope that you'll be able to use the recording later too, because I think you did such a great job. So